Yo, 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 what is up, Halo community? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. And wow, we just got like a huge bomb uh, yesterday. So if you didn't know, 343 actually created a roadmap for pretty much the future of Halo Infinite and what's going to be happening with it. And I just want to start off by saying that I actually appreciate that. They actually went out and pretty much made this entire roadmap uh, showing us the future of this game and just giving us the brutal, honest truth of uh, what's going on with this game. And so obviously, if you've been playing Halo Infinite or if you've been playing a lot of 343's games, I mean, you already know that 343 is not exactly known for, uh, they don't exactly have a good track record. If we go back to Halo 4, uh, you know, I think they did ship a pretty complete game. It was missing a lot of the competitive stuff it pretty much they pretty much abolished the competitive scene in uh halo 4 but overall it was pretty much uh a complete game i would say the only problem with halo 4 was uh the fact that no one really liked it because it just didn't feel like halo and then we go to mcc and i don't even know if i have to say anything about that i mean that was like probably one of the worst launches of any game i've ever seen uh it was literally unplayable i would even consider it worse than cyberpunk uh, well, actually, maybe not, because you could play the campaign, but campaign did have a few issues, but, uh, for the most part, I think campaign was working, I guess, but multiplayer was completely broken, you couldn't do anything like that, and it was just filled with so many bugs and stuff like that. And then we go over to Halo 5, and, um, I mean, it, the cycle just continues, guys. Halo 5 only launched with, like, four or five ranked playlists, and that was it. They pretty much had no social games or anything. To, uh, Halo 5 they had really nothing other than Warzone I guess you could say and Forge mode was also delayed campaign was all right I guess I mean I, I thought it was pretty bad actually but I, I still had a fun time kind of playing through it but overall yeah the story was pretty pretty damn bad and so now here we are with infinite and I mean it just continues uh, clearly something's not working over at uh, 343 uh, they can't get their stuff together and it's been going on for quite a while and it's now just becoming more apparent, especially with Halo Infinite. I feel like, you know, people liked what was there. It's just that, like, the updates were so slow. And even what we had at launch, you know, there wasn't much to go off of. There was barely any maps, barely any modes. We didn't even have Team Slayer. And then we didn't even have, we didn't even have an XP system. <laughs> like, like, what? I don't even know how that even happened. Uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious that XP systems help keep players engaged in the game and stuff uh you know halo has had xp systems before so it, it just made no sense not to have one you know they didn't know what they were doing um and honestly i yeah i mean i just appreciate this map or this roadmap because it really just shows like uh you know what's been going on and it shows that obviously they've been struggling and it pretty much just took this for people to realize that uh yeah infinite's definitely in a bad state and it's not going to be a long time until it gets fixed i mean look at mcc mcc didn't get fixed until like what five six years when did that game come out like 2014 it started to be functional by like what like 2019 or something around there you know it took a good amount of years like four or five years or something like that I mean, we didn't even have co-op campaign as well. Like, it, you know, the signs were there that obviously they were struggling. At this point, I'm just, like, really disappointed. Like, I kind of, like, it's, like, whatever to me now because it's kind of expected at this point. Um, you know, I'm not even angry anymore. Uh, back when Halo Infinite launched, I was pretty upset because I do think they actually nailed something pretty nice. And, you know, they, of course, they failed on every other thing, which is unfortunate. And yeah, it's a really, it's just a damn shame uh, that this is happening. This game was definitely not ready for launch, that's for sure. Um, you know, I was actually one of the people who thought it should be delayed even more. But who knows, would that have worked? Because, I mean, technically, 343 has had like six years. Uh, I mean, it's taken them a year to put out one season. So I don't even know if giving them more time is gonna necessarily help because clearly it's something going on inside their studio not with uh not having enough enough time is what it seems like to me anyways so let's actually get into the roadmap and see what's actually coming here uh i mean let's look at it so we got halo infinite winter update so season three has been delayed to march 7th which is pretty ridiculous so it's now a 10 month season essentially although i guess we are getting a bit of a mini update which is nice but it's 
it's literally just a 10 month season almost a year long season uh it's pretty insane so let's look at the winter update first actually so we got november 8th so this is taking place of what where season three should have been but uh yeah we're getting this instead so we got the forge beta and then we got campaign co-op and mission replay <laughs> So, I mean, this already says enough. I mean, Forge should have been at least closer to launch. Although, I will give them a little... Uh, I'll give them the benefit of doubt. Because I feel like Forge has been significantly like getting better throughout all the games. So, okay, maybe I'll give them a little, little credit there. Uh, you know, that's fine, being delayed a bit. Although, I feel like they still should have had it a bit closer to launch. Especially considering that they didn't offer much at launch. So, I feel like Forge should have definitely been something they prioritized uh, early on but uh yeah okay we're in the forger beta that's pretty awesome so we're getting campaign network co-op and mission replay i mean this itself is like i don't even know how i mean how long has it been since infinite launched december when did infinite launch technically it launched december 15th i think because they did that whole beta thing or no i guess december 8th or something i don't remember no i think multiplayer started november 15th if, if I remember correctly, and then uh, the game launched, like the official launch was December 8th, I believe. So it's been quite a while, and we still haven't gotten co op. Uh, we're gonna get it, it seems like, November 8th, unless, of course, they change it, which I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it gets pushed back uh, even more. And this itself, like, obviously, this should have been <laughs> at the launch of the game. But this itself, like, is issues that they've created. Like, because of making this open world... Because I remember them mentioning in, like, a blog or something saying that... Uh, they didn't know how to add co-op into Halo Infinite because of the open world stuff. Now, maybe that those are just excuses. Or maybe they were actually being honest. I don't know. But if it is because of that, I mean, that's just their own fault. Like, why are you guys... Do, you get, do they not, like, think ahead? Like, that's where I don't understand. Like... Obviously, if you're going to have an open world game, then it's going to function a little differently, like the spawning and stuff. So, you know, they had to kind of had this planned out, you would think. I don't know. It doesn't really make any sense to me. So I also want to add on um, also mission replay. I mean, that's a feature that's been in countless games for so long. I don't know how that also gets delayed. I guess apparently the open world kind of messed that up again, uh, which I, I just don't understand that. Like, if they were going to have that many issues, why make it open world in the first place? Like, I feel like they're just doing a little too much more than they can actually do. So, I don't know. But, uh, I do want to add on that they canceled split screen co-op, couch co-op. Uh, this was a feature that was, I believe, promised. And, unfortunately, they did cancel it. Um, who knows if they'll bring it back in the future. I hope they do. But, honestly... I don't think they will, or even if they do, I don't think we're going to see it until like 2026 or something like that. You know, that's also been a feature that's been a part of Halo for a long while. Like, I can understand not many people use split screen as much nowadays because of online play. But, you know, that feature has always been part of Halo, and kind of stripping that away, I feel like, does take away from the game. I mean, if you look at Call of Duty, they still continue to have split screen uh, Nintendo has a bunch of, most of their games have split screen, so I feel like there is some sort of significance with, uh, split screen co-op. I think it still has a place in games, maybe not as much, I guess I, I can agree with that, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely been a part of Halo for a long time, so I feel like stripping it away, uh, is, I feel like stripping it away is obviously, like, a loss and just sucks, but I don't know, man, it, I mean, I guess I could understand because clearly they don't know how to uh, manage their stuff here. But <laughs> I don't know. It's just disappointing because I actually wanted to play uh, camping co-op with a few of my family members. Not everyone can buy a second Xbox. And even then, I think that's a little ridiculous having to buy like multiple consoles just for that. I mean, I, I think that itself is pretty... I don't, I don't know. I don't think I'd be willing to waste that much money on the kind of stuff like that. Just to play freaking co-op. I think that's pretty ridiculous. Alright, so what else do we got here? So we got a free 30 tier battle pass. Uh, this, I guess, is pretty nice. Um, so a lot of the armors that people wanted that were uh, cut out, I guess, for some reason from the Season 1 battle pass, they are bringing 
into this pass which features like the mark 5 helmet i think the jfo helmet as well as what's the other one cqb and just some like other armor attachments and stuff that uh we didn't get to see and so it seems like they're bringing those into like a free battle pass which is pretty nice uh that's that's pretty awesome uh not much to say there i mean i guess it's cool but cosmetics could only you know do so much so i don't know it's it's, it's a pretty yeah i mean it's a good thing but i mean that's not much so so we are also getting some new maps which is detachment and argyle and these are actually just forge maps that were made by if i remember correctly by 343 i believe is what they said um i mean i don't know i i feel like using forge i just feel like using forge maps as a replacement for dev maps because for whatever reason they can't create maps i think it's just kind of lame i don't think forge maps should fill in that gap uh you know it's cool to have forge maps and matchmaking and stuff but you know i also want dev maps alongside that you know it shouldn't be up to us to actually make content for their game i feel like that's just kind of like i don't know i don't really agree with that uh i mean i guess it's nice for now since we can't get any new maps for whatever reason so hey whatever i'll take it so we also now let's look at the smaller things which i guess they think is pretty small uh which i'm not surprised because for whatever reason they didn't pr freaking put an xp system in halo infinite at launch which makes absolutely no sense but uh yeah we got match xp beta so we're gonna beta for having match xp oh boy i mean <laughs> Do I need to really say any anything else? I mean, we're gonna match XP beta. I mean, that's cool, but it's like, I don't know, man. It's, <laughs> it's oh man, we're like almost a year into this game. <laughs> oh god, I don't know, man. This is just so disappointing. Like, I'm not even angry, man. Like, this is just disappointing and just tragic. Anyways, let's move on to the next thing, which is some events and a mode. So we got an event happening in January, which is called Joint Fire. Uh, the events are pretty lame, I'm not even going to lie. The events are just pretty... They don't even feel like events. I mean, it's it, it, they're alright, but they just don't even feel like events. Uh, the event system definitely has to change. Uh, they just don't feel like events, that's all I gotta say. Uh, there's still a fun way to get into Halo, though. So I will say that. Um, so it at least kind of brings somewhat kind of brings the game to life a tiny bit i guess um but overall the events i think have just been pretty lackluster so now let's move on to the new game mode so we got covert one flag whoa guys so we got we actually do have one flag in the game but now you got covert one flag <laughs> which i mean this is also just like why it's not even a new mode it's literally just one flag with custom settings I mean, I'll take it, it's fun, but, like, I don't even know why they have this as, like, a highlight. I mean, I don't even think that's a highlight. Like, man, I could make my own one flag variant. I'll call it Commando One Flag, and then I'll have, like, overshields on or something like that. I'll just call it Juggernaut One Flag or something. I don't know. That's basically what they did. I mean, it's it sounds like a fun mode, but it's, like, I don't know, man. I mean, that kind of stuff should just be, like, rotating in daily. Uh, you know, we shouldn't have to be looking forward to that as, like, a new mode or something. We should have a rotational playlist already that kind of, like, cycles stuff out like that to kind of keep it refreshing. But, you know, it is what it is. And so we also got so we also got another event in December. Uh, so I guess this this event is the one we're going to look after or forward to after the, uh, the Yappening, uh, which is the winter contingency event and honestly the first one i don't even remember what came along with the first one i know the first one had some pretty cool coatings it had like those christmas coatings or whatever they were pretty cool coatings but i honestly don't even remember what mode came along with that event i i it was that forgettable i don't even remember and of course there's going to be quality of life improvements so that's everything we're going to get in november 8th uh, which is where season three would have started, but instead it got delayed. Um, and we're getting this mini update. So I think it is nice that we're actually getting somewhat of an update. Because imagine if they just delayed season three and we didn't get anything during November. That would be even more of a bigger issue, but at least we're getting something. So there's that to look forward to. 
Uh, but it's pretty ridiculous overall anyways. But uh, at least we're getting something. In place of uh, where Season 3 should have started. So now let's move on to what Season 3 will offer. Which is called Echoes Within. And it starts March 7th. So Season 3, or rather Season 2 is going to be pretty much 10 months long almost a whole entire year which is insane to uh, think about especially for a live service game but let's go ahead and see what season 3 has to offer maybe it has some redeeming qualities that uh is worth the wait right so let's see we got new maps we got one arena map we got one big team battle map uh so the same typical stuff as previous seasons and we also got a new weapon the dmr which i think is pretty cool uh, you know finally getting something added to the sandbox so yeah i mean that's pretty nice and then we got a new equipment which is a shroud screen that's also nice uh yeah pretty pretty nice and we're also getting a 100 tier battle pass as usual per season we always get one of those and so what else is coming let's see we got custom game browser we got in-game reporting um custom game browser it's a shame that it got pushed all the way to season three this should have been Instead of the XP system, they should have just pushed the XP system back. Like, honestly, I'm just going to say it. XP system at this point, like, just push it back um, and put the custom browser in. I think that would have been a better change because at this point, like, people want to play, like, new maps and stuff. And Forge is going to offer that. And if we have the custom game browser in here, that's definitely going to help with waiting for Season 3 and all that stuff. Because, you know, we'll be playing, like our own like btb maps slayer maps you know custom games all that stuff and so this not being in the winter update the custom game browser not being in the winter update is a huge l because now it's going to make it more difficult to find lobbies um and if you just want to like log on and play a few games yeah it's just going to make it difficult because now you're going to have to go searching for custom games and stuff like online uh, discord stuff like that it's gonna be you know pretty annoying i would say like obviously people are are gonna do it you know they're gonna search for lobbies and stuff but yeah this would have helped like a lot like it would have helped a lot on uh waiting on all this stuff if we had custom game browser launch with uh forge so that's a huge l but at least we're getting it in season three i guess so we kind of got it coming but uh yeah it's gonna be a long while so we got a new narrative event, which I'm going to be honest, I don't even care about the narrative events. I thought they were going to be something cool and interesting. When we first uh, heard about it in season two, I thought the new narrative events were going to be something that was like super cool and kind of make it unique compared to like the normal events we already get. And yeah, overall, it was pretty disappointing. Uh, you know, it's cool having a cutscene, but the mode itself is just pretty boring. I was hoping we would have like some kind of like mini mission or something. Maybe that's expecting too much, but I don't know, man. I think it would have been cooler for these narrative events. I mean, they're ca literally called narrative events, right? They're literally story events. So why can't we live or like kind of play that story or that little kind of, you know, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me anyways. Uh, and it was just disappointing overall for season two. So maybe they made some changes in season three. I don't know. We'll see. It apparently continues the storyline from season two, uh, which I'm not a fan of. <laughs> I think they should just start like a new story. I'm not going to lie, but uh, I don't know. Maybe it gets better. We'll see. And so we also got in-game reporting, which once again, should have definitely been closer to launch. But uh, I mean, like most of the cheaters already left because no one's really playing this game anymore. Uh, you know, population has gone down, so no one's going to want to cheat in it as much anyways. So I feel like that's kind of like, yeah, it's needed, but I mean, it's kind of pointless at this point. I feel like, um, I don't know. I don't, I've never really encountered cheaters anymore. Uh, at launch I did, you know, around launch kind of around there. I definitely encountered a good amount, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good feature, you know, definitely should have it, but it's like, just kind of sucks how it's, you know, this far out in the game's lifespan. And so we also got Forge beta updates, which I'm assuming is just bug fixes and maybe object updates. Like maybe, maybe we get like new objects. I don't know that'd be kind of nice and so we got new game modes and these i will say are actually like some game modes that should be considered i guess new uh even though technically we have seen them before but you know they're still actually like new i would say instead of just like a custom variant so that features vip and escalation so vip is uh where you pretty much just just defend or someone on your team becomes the vip and you have to defend them 
while also killing the enemy's VIP or something. And you get a lot more points if you kill their VIP. It's kind of like a modified Slayer, which is funny because I just mentioned that Covert 1 flag is a modified 1 flag. And these are essentially the same. So I guess it... I don't know. I mean, I guess it's kind of the same thing. But I think these are a lot more unique compared to that 1 flag mode. So there's that at least, I think. I don't know. And then we got uh, Escalation which is uh literally just gun game so that should be pretty fun that is definitely one of the newer modes that has been introduced into halo so that one i'll definitely take and that's about it for modes hopefully we do get more but uh, i think those are just the highlights i guess and then we also got of course quality of life updates and a new fracture event which is supposed to be based off the spy core i don't really know much lore about that core but uh yeah it's supposed to be supposed to be based off of that uh, I don't know. It sounds alright, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what it has to offer. So that's pretty much the entire future of Halo Infinite. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is what's going to be happening throughout pretty much uh, all the way up to halfway next year, right? Like 2023, June 27th. That's like halfway through, right? Uh, which is pretty ridiculous. I mean, I don't think this is enough it's it's definitely pretty small amount of stuff here but apparently they are trying to uh actually like be consistent with updates after uh season three or something but i mean all all i hear is talk from them so you know it's all about action and see if they actually live up to it so but uh yeah i mean it's just disappointing obviously a lot of people are understandably pretty disappointed and angry i mean personally i'm kind of just like over this game already like i still play it from time to time but i've kind of just like moved on i play a lot more games now um you know i still enjoy making videos for it because it's kind of a fun thing to do but uh yeah other than that i don't really play the game as much i only play it from time to time because otherwise i literally just want to like break my controller if i play this for an extended <laughs> period of time which is pretty insane because for a video game you know it's supposed to be fun and literally what they created here is just kind of you know counters that <laughs> like the challenge system is just so scuffed man like that's like one of my biggest issues with the game like gosh dude it is so annoying i mean granted you don't have to do the challenges but like what else is there to do other than just play the game which is what i already do but uh i don't know it's always nice playing the game and having something to kind of grind towards because you know that's what keeps you engaged you know i've already experienced all the maps most of the weapons uh you know it does get a little repetitive and i do get bored if there's like nothing to work towards since i've already experienced like halo infinite on the same map same weapons everything you know it's like it gets boring after a while <laughs> but honestly yeah guys i mean i just appreciate that they actually just kind of laid this out and told us all right well here's the brutal honest truth of what's going to happen i mean i'll take it you know they gave us like boom this is what's going on whether you like it or not, that's how it is. And yeah, <laughs> obviously, you know, we already know the game was in a bad state. And there's definitely issues with in 343 that are happening. Uh, and I wish Microsoft would kind of interfere with them. You know, kind of see or intervene, whatever you want to call it. I wish they would, uh, you know, I don't know, give them support or something. Like, I'm pretty sure they could pull some strings get like some a few other studios to help or something because they got a, they freaking bought out uh activision right they got a bunch of studios although i don't know if the deal's gone through so i guess maybe they can't do that yet i don't know i don't know much about that but i'm sure they could have they probably have like a spare kind of studio kind of thing i don't know man at least for like a time being you know just kind of help this game you know just help this game <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that's really all there is to it. Uh, you know, this is Xbox flagship title, but I guess they don't care anymore. I don't know. Uh, so it definitely, it's just, it's whack, man. I don't know. Anyways, that's pretty much what I think. I mean, I feel like everyone's already said it. Uh, it, it sucks, but uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of glad we actually got, you know, the brutal, brutal, honest truth of what's going on. I think that's pretty much yeah I, I just appreciate that um and yeah i mean i'll just stick to doing what i do uh playing it from time to time 
Because <laughs> I kind of already disconnected myself from Halo, so it's like... I don't know, man. I mean, I kind of just expect disappointment at this point for uh, Halo, so... Yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say about it. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Did you guys think it was, uh... Yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel like everyone knows it's pretty bad, but I don't know. Maybe some of you think it's good. I mean, I guess it's nice because we are getting content, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. And with that being said, consider subscribing and liking the video as it shows your support helps me out. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.